how to create uh, sites and all the site related activities uh, like how creating a site and then um, adding users to the site um, and then when you add multiple sites assign multiple sites to your user um, how uh, does his login behave differently and uh, how to flip uh, from one site to another when you have a, a user assigned with multiple sites um, and also we saw how to create a site admin and how to create a normal site user and then how they are different and also we saw um, in general creating an admin uh, user or creating a normal interactor user and then how uh, those two um, users are different when they log in and, and how um, they see different pages you know uh, when you log in as an administrator you actually see these admin screens admin pages these over here um, and when you log in as an interactor uh, who's not an admin uh, you only see the content part of it so we also saw how to create projects in, um, and all the project related activities you know uh, by that I mean adding a project and then uh, adding uh, publishing reports into the project and then also assigning um, moving up, um, objects from one project to another uh, so we saw all these activities how we can perform and also how we, we saw how we can delete a particular project uh, in case we do not want it anymore or even delete a site and the users okay and also we went back to the configuration uh, window and then uh, as i mentioned you know you don't really have to do all the configuration initially when you are installing and configuring your server so in, in the initial uh, configuration you it's okay if you just uh, set up the user id and the password um, and uh, set up the uh, user, user id and the password and then uh, we can go ahead and then with all the other tabs we can actually come back and then do the configuration uh, so um, yeah the other one more thing that you would have to do initially is the authentication process you know whether we're going to do uh, a local authentication or we're going to use the active directory um, so those are the things that you need to do first for the first time and then we can come back whenever we want and make the changes to the configuration um, or tableau configuration uh, by coming back to this window here so we saw how we can set up um, in the data connection tab how we can set up what kind of caching that we would want either um, something that uh, re refreshes less often which is good uh, for um, you know, underlying data if it doesn't change often then this one is good and uh, the balanced where you can specify um, how long you want the cache to be uh, maintained and before it's refreshed and also there be, there's another option which says refresh more often which means um, uh, if their cache keeps getting uh, refreshed every time a page load happens so this can be um, not I mean this could be probably um, something that might decrease your performance uh, because of the uh, con I mean because of the uh, the frequent uh, refresh of your uh, cache okay so we also saw uh, where we can go ahead and uh, subscribe for the email alerts and the subscription tab so we probably will uh, look at it a little later how the user can actually subscribe to the view and all those things um, and also we saw this is the same thing how to configure for the email subscriptions and then we saw where uh, we can go ahead and uh, uh, apply the SSL certification now in case you want to do your um, and generally you would want to do your uh, server as an, uh, a local um, as a secure HTTPS uh, connection so you will have to actually go and buy some um, the certificates from uh, the trusted authorities like uh, Verizon, Verizon or uh, GoDaddy and then place them into the this specified folder here and then you can um, come back to the screen this window and then just just navigate to the to the respective folder for these files and then uh, you would be set up for https connection so uh, things to be remember uh, things to uh, points to be remembered as uh, one of them is that a server um, it acts uh, all the all your um, non ssl port requests would be automatically redirected to port 
for SSL port 443. And also the other point uh, you need to remember is that Tableau Server only supports port 43 as a secure port. And if there is any other uh, system or, or the application which is using this um, port, then uh, Tableau cannot use that. Okay, and uh, we also saw um, a couple more other things which are um, uh, like which are to be noted. One is the system. All the settings that you do are system wide, which means if you have multiple sites now in your um, in your installation, all the sites would be affected by any setting that you change that you do. And also, the user authentication is permanent. What that means is, you know, the moment you uh, select uh, either user uh, local authentication or Active Directory, um, it becomes permanent for that installation. So if you want to change it later on, you will have to uninstall, reinstall, and then make the change. So, and the, also we saw how to uh, how you would want to come back and uh, reconfigure, and also you can go to the windows and then uh, bring up your uh, um, configure dialog box, and then you can make all your configurations, and then you can go back and start your server. Also, we saw uh, the we had an introduction to the processes. You know, we saw what each of the processes um, does, and then how how does it perform what are its performance characteristics and again these are all uh, 8.0 um, architecture so which 32 bit some of them so in 8.1 you have all 64 bit architecture so we saw what's an application server a backgrounder and a backgrounder takes care of all your refreshes so we we'll, um, in, in this session probably we're gonna uh, look at how we can create uh, an extract uh, and what exactly um, uh, is ex by what do you mean exactly by extract you know we will see that and then uh, that, among other things later in the session uh, and also we in the last session we saw what uh, our, we just discussed what data engine is you know so it um, so it is the one which uh, take all the workloads um, so whatever disql uh, generates you know it is taken by the data engine uh, and it, it really queries the extracts and all those files and whenever it's doing that you know it, it takes up a lot of memory and we have a data server you know uh, and also we have on the postgres sql which is actually the rep tableau's repository uh, which means uh, all your the users that you're creating the workbooks that you're publishing and all these things actually go into the postgres sql uh, database and also we saw what's WSQL. You know, WSQL is basically uh, the one that renders and loads the uh, dashboards for us. Uh, it can be CPU bound if there's a lot of interaction. We have a lot of interactive reports published and uh, people are um, logging in and doing all the interactions and changing the views very often. Then you can see that um, the memory, it, use, it, it might use a lot of memory. Okay, and we also saw how ex uh, what exactly this um, we can reconfigure the processes. You know, we can say how many uh, VSQL servers we want to be running on this machine, how many application servers we, we want to be running in this machine, backgrounders, and then the data server and the engine. So this is this is again in the configuration tab itself. Okay. So I think what we can do now is um, we can again come back to the uh, web interface of Tableau and then see some of the uh, perform some of the. Uh, actions that you can perform on this and also uh, let's um, actually create another dashboard and publish it and then um, use that dashboard to actually uh, understand a little bit more about the web interface of uh, the server okay so here we are this is the tableau uh, server web interface uh, let's now go back to the okay so before that let's create another uh, folder the project folder you know, which we had um, deleted yesterday so we probably can go ahead and create another one to be used today. Okay, let's call it sales again. Okay, so now we have a new project called sales. So let me just put this down. Okay, so let's now go ahead and create a new dashboard. So I am going to connect to the superset, uh, superstore subset. Okay. So 
so now we saw that I create I connected to the super store subset Excel um, a data source and then I've got all my uh, dimensions and measures um, coming up over here automatically uh, um, into the into this respective sections and and then let's now create um, a dashboard um, a couple of sheets and dashboards and in, include some interactions within that and meanwhile you can uh, also look at some of the features that Tableau desktop has to offer um, it is always good to know uh, the development environment of a tool as well uh, because it will always help even if we are doing admin activities on the server it will always help to know uh, how we can um, how a particular uh, functionality of this tool works um, so that it's easier for us to understand at the later point of time when if uh, we run into some issues and how to resolve those and all okay so now this is the data source um, and these are the dimensions and measures that we have so in general um, if we are if we are looking uh, at a at a company's performance i would always want to see uh, what's my sales and how, how's my sales and profit you know those are the two main driving factors that i would have in my um, <coughs> uh, in my dashboard you know and also i could see it in different various different um, by group uh, various different uh, dimensions you know so i might want to look at it at a customer segment level uh, or i might want to look at it uh, order priority or a product de uh, department level uh, sales so let me let's go for our department level sales information so so i have this department level sales information so uh, you can, meanwhile i i you can see that how um, uh, convenient it is in tableau to really build a dashboard um, with, with all the nice little features that tableau provides us um, like the sorting here okay and then uh, let's just do as we did earlier um, in our session uh, i'm going to color this by profit so when you color this by profit what it says is uh, basically uh, my technology is my highest selling um, and my highest profit making because of the dark green color um, whereas furniture is my second largest selling but uh, it is not my second largest profit making you know because it's a really light shade of gray, green and if you see office supplies even if it doesn't sell so much I mean it's the third largest selling but even then it's making me decent profits you know it's giving me uh, the second largest profit that I have in all the departments well three in this case okay so let's let's now uh, have this as one of the sheets which is the department sales okay so let me go here and then create another sheet and I'll let I'll do a I'll do an item level sales now which is more of a detailed reporting you know I might want to I might not always want to see this but then I'll go ahead and create it anyway so okay let me let me do it the same way color it by profit again you're seeing here I mean some of them have turned red you know because that's because some of my uh, some of my items are really making losses you know so which is not great thing that need to be looked into item sales okay so this is so i have two dashboard uh, two uh, two reports here basically a department level sales and the item level sales so what i can do is actually um i'll just go to the dashboard okay i'm going to drag this in department sales on the top and my item sales at the bottom right Just drag this a little here because I don't really have too many item uh, departments over here. And let me just title give a title to this, which is sales dashboard again. Okay, and you have this uh, small little uh, formatting things, you know, which you can always do. You can just go to a format title and add a, a border to it, you know, if you want. You can share it if you want. Okay. And you can share, you can format each and every uh, object that's available over here. 
Okay, so let me keep this here. Let me also get let me also get the color legend from this sheet here. Okay, and if I want it to come right next to this sheet over here, this view over here, I can just pull the blank and put it here. And then I can Yep, so we have our dashboard, a very simple dashboard here. So what we're going to do this time is uh, we're going to have some interactions. You know? So what, what do we mean by interaction? So I've been talking about interactive dashboards when there isn't more lot of interaction on the server and all those things. So what does it actually mean? So very simply, um, interactions could be uh, uh, filtering or sorting or in any of these things, you know, more, uh, drilling down or drilling up or things like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, Tableau gives us this very neat functionality called uh, use as filter, which is basically uh, there is another you know, feature called action, you know, so actions could be of three kinds, a filter action, a URL action, and you can also have an highlight action. So I'm going to use the um, filter action. Okay, so I'm just going to say use as filter. So what, I, what I've just done is I've used this sheet of mine, which is the department wise sale. Uh, and I'm going to use that as a filter on my second sheet here, which is the item level sheet, um, sales. So let me just go and click over here, technology, right? So you see that the that the sheet over here at the bottom level sheet, um, this has got filtered only on the technology items, right? So now I'm seeing only the items which belong to the technology department. If I don't want to see that, I want to see the furniture, I can just click on it and then just click furniture here and then you see all, only the furniture coming up. So so that's that's the interaction. So let me just go in and put the labels on this. So I can do this. I can do this. And uh, I can also uh, do it another another way. I'll just, let me show you. Very simply I drag the sales onto the label. Okay, drag the sales onto the label and just go and format it if you want. So you can you can change it to have single decimal place and then a unit as million. Okay. And since it's currency, uh, I should have gone currency standard. I'm sorry. So let, let me do the same thing here. Just so that and I'll say million. So it will show me uh, 2.3 million, 3.2 million, etc. Uh, I can do the same thing for the axis as well, right? So I'll just go and say currency custom one. 